Folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Beautiful Friday here in Tucson. Weather finally starting to cool down a little bit. And I got a chance today to speak to somebody who um, recently came on my radar and I'm not gonna pretend that she has a huge cannon or a big <laughs> songbook or things like that, but she knows that this is her time and uh, we only live once, so it's about creating constantly and trying to inspire other people. Elsa Jacobson, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's such an honor to have you. Um, I mean, can you just talk a little bit about what has put you here now uh, in a musical state of mind? Yeah, of course. Uh, I grew up writing music and singing, and I've, I've always loved it since I was a kid. I remember like having songbooks when I was a young girl. And the songs obviously make no sense now, um, but looking back on it, I always loved creating music and I, I learned guitar in my early teens and I, for a long time, kind of hid it from a lot of my friends because I just deemed it not cool for a, a very long period of time. Why isn't it cool in high school? That's so I, weird. I, you know, I I'm with you because yeah. my, my musical friends are, who are badasses today, yeah. they were shedding in high school, but they... Yeah. Anyway, continue. It's just, I think it was... Um, wanting to be as bland and as palatable as possible to fit in with that, everybody else. That's hard for me to believe, but yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I would play for friends, really, you know, close-knit friends. Sure. And it, it was always something that I kept to myself. And as I have moved to Tucson, uh, I moved to Tucson about five years ago for school. And um, the people I started to surround myself with, you know, started to be musicians. A lot of them, the Bush League boys. Um, and as I watched them create and start their own careers in their music, um, I felt very inspired and I, I kind of started feeling it pulling on my heart a lot more and I I've had a lot of amazing people in my life more recently kind of give me the nudge I needed and um, it kind of felt like the, the perfect things were lining up for right now, for it to be the time. Elsa, um, I mean, you talk about looking back at songs that you wrote when you were younger and they don't make any sense but actually a lot of people a lot of germs of songs and themes of songs come from silly things and true. I just wonder about if you've been able to sort of take some of that stuff that you early stuff and instead of sort of you know laughing it off or not really wanting to acknowledge it mm -hmm. uh, taking it and incorporating it into like a modern songbook for you I think kind of what you said, like the silly things. Um, I started kind of noticing a lot of the nuanced aspects of songs. I take a lot of inspiration from my writing from Adrienne Linker, and sure. I love the way that she composes her songs and how she forms her songs around these very intimate moments. Um, and I, I draw a lot of inspiration from that, and I think that ties back to like writing about silly things. Talk a little bit about the community. You went here for a music degree, or you just started hanging out with the musicians? Um, I. I just hang, started hanging out with the Flagstaff musician. So uh, you knew them then, and, that, and yeah. then you. Oh, that is, so talk about those cats, because honestly, I haven't met a lot of them, and I, I, I'm sure they're like, "Who is this cat?" But I'm, <laughs> I'm like, they have rejuvenated me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have my brother, soul brothers and sisters yep. that are here, but those cats, and I'm talking like Dylan Walker, Ryan Wheelis, yep. and I, other cats. Talk about those cats that you. When did? How did they get your heartstrings to sort of start pulling? You know, I, I just see the passion that they have towards what they get to do um, and just how much satisfaction they get out of it and how they're able to channel so much of their their life through music. And that is kind of what drew me, I guess, and just having that support system around me and all of the support that they've given me as I've started to try this out. Um, they've they've definitely like held my hand a lot and inspired me in a lot of ways. Can you give an example of, uh, I forgot the word you used, uh, dedication or passion I mean mm -hmm. it's more than just because no one's getting rich doing this stuff no no so it's it, this is really about finding your purpose in life yeah you feel like that's can you talk about a story about them that sort of was like wow they're really in this to win it um you know just watching I went to the very first Bush League show about two years Damn. ago and I remember when they decided to make a band and how exciting that all was and just seeing them book their first gig and continue to book gigs after that and just the place that they're at now where they are a recognizable name um that's just i think and actually like that just shows how passionate they are i mean they weren't booking these gigs for money in the beginning they just wanted to play music together they have so much fun when they do it and that i think is um something that 
has also in inspired me where it's not about being famous or getting your name out there. It's just about sharing music. You know, we're all here to just share music. Elsa, do you, can you just talk about, I mean, regardless whether how much you've started, it doesn't matter whether you've been playing two months, two minutes, or 20 years. Yeah. Um, but can you just talk about what you think are the greatest qualities of leadership? I mean, it's, ultimately, I would assume that as you become more comfortable with your voice, I mean, you'd be a natural leader Thank of a you. band. Thank you. And obviously, you, you know, you haven't had a ton of experience, but in your mind, in other parts of your life, what have you learned is good, effective leadership? And that may be something you can carry over in your own career. Um, in, the, in my own personal experiences, great leadership comes from somebody who will do all of the lower level things, you know, like they're not, they don't have an elitist mentality. They are there to sit through the hardships and they're there to just be a, a positive voice, but also recognize the hardships, you know, and um, someone who's just in it through everything and inspires people, even when it gets really hard. And I have been very fortunate to have many great leaders in my life. Can you talk about one? Um, one is my, my dear boss. Uh, I work at Tucson Village Farm. We're an educational farm. Whoa, what is that? It's an urban educational farm that focuses on nutrition and agriculture education. Where's it located? Use. It's on River and Campbell. Oh, I drive, um, I can't believe, oh, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I you do tours and uh, you teach people to, to plant? Is that, I mean, I don't want to be over general. No, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, I run a 4-H youth program with them um, for teens. Yeah. Um, and so I teach all, all about healthy living habits. So it has to do with nutrition, and agriculture, how to cook the food that you're growing. Um, every year we hike the Grand Canyon. So it's all about kind of setting a foundation of healthy habits that they can then prosper off of. And so my boss there, her name is Elizabeth Sparks. She is constantly one that is, like she's taking out the trash, she's doing the dishes. Even when she has a gajillion other things that she needs to get done, she's still wanting to help out in any way that she can. And she inspires me every day. Yeah, I remember Michael Carabello from Santana. He played congas in the original band. And he said, Carlos, is a, it, it's, it's good to be a good chief and a good Indian. You know, you have to do it all, and you have you to have basically to get all. down to the level of that. Yeah. Um, well, we'll continue this this conversation uh, uh, in audio, but um, <laughs> it's so divine to meet you, Elsa. It's such an honor to meet you. Thank you so I'm much. Very honored. Thank you. It's the Jake Feinberg Show. We'll see you later. <laughs>